back to the 37th. Wait, delete that. Nailed it. Okay, let me just delete that real quick. All right, ready? Delete it. Yep, ready. Welcome back to season two, episode seven, or episode 32 of Attack on Titan, the AOT Chronicles podcast. I'm your host, Chad. And I'm Ronnie. Boy, and we're covering close combat. We had a big in last episode. Oh, did Ronnie. we have a big in, all right. And, uh, yeah, it gets even bigger, this next one. Oh, yeah? Just keeps getting bigger? Just keeps getting bigger. So, after that monster revelation last episode, we, uh, we have a flashback here, and... It's, of course, Reiner, and what do you think he's saying? He's talking about his hometown. What? His hometown? His hometown, okay. Is that, like, important to him or something? Do you know what he'll do with his hometown? Um, never forget it? Nope. He will return okay. to his hometown. All right. Okay, so we got... If only, little... if only Aaron said that uh, he wanted to slaughter all the Titans, we'd really have something going here. <sighs> well... Just wait. He might be uh, saying what you what no you think. Okay. Bert then says that we go over to Bert. You know, this guy talks our fucking ears off. He says that he joined to be in the military police to say to stay safe in the interior. He then asks Aaron why he joined. Aaron, in the most shocking turn of events, and this is the flashback. Mind okay. You. Yeah. Says that because he needs to slaughter all of the Titans. Whoa. This episode has got it all so far. I know. All right. We're checking off a bunch of bullet points here. All of them. Every, everyone's Attack on Titan bingo cards just filling right on up. <laughs> Riders then like... Just, if we could just get Mikasa to mutter, Eren, Eren, we'd really get something going. Or yell it, either yeah. one. Yeah, Reiner then, in the flashback still, mind you, says that, oh, so the encounter with the Titans didn't break your will? He's like, you can do it. (laughs) So he's just motivating him to uh, attack himself, I guess. And then that's when we cut back over to Aaron Aaron throwing that haymaker that we were left off with, hitting Reiner in the face, and they both plummet to the ground off the wall. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah, I guess, yeah, you could call it brutal, um... It really cool though how like mid air all everything happens really cool. Mm-hmm. So then we have Mikasa, she's up on top of the wall still. She's regretting not cutting off their heads and holding back. So I thought this was an interesting take. I thought, you know, that was just Mikasa slaying out. Yeah. I thought she was going all out right I there. I know, but she she was like purposely doing it in a way where she was like saving them. Yeah, like, she was like too scared like she even, couldn't go all the way through with it. Even though she was slicing up necks. Yeah. Bert with a half transformed body. He's up there. He's got his rib cage stuck to the wall. So weird. It, yeah, it's just such a weird he's such a weird, ugly person in his Titan form. But he ends up he had grabbed Ymir, you know, and he also grabbed a random person and it shows him throw both of them in his mouth. And they're just like some guy yells, Oh, he's got someone. And Jameer. Yeah. It's just like, what? He's got Jameer and someone else. <laughs> We're like, okay. Well, as you just see someone's poor legs sticking out of Bert yeah. before he swallows them. Oh, damn. <laughs> and so Hanji goes, Hanji starts thinking logically like she always does. And she goes, all right, soldiers, let's all attack. They're a threat to hum- humanity. I love how she didn't think twice about this. She's like, we just got to go after him. Whatever. But how about we talk about the animation of Bert trying to throw haymakers at him? How sick you, was that? You mean that slow motion replay we got? That was dope. Here, here it comes! <laughs> it's still coming. Wait for it. Wait for it. And I love the wind effect. Like he's still going so slow, but he's so big that yeah. the, the wind effect is just. No, the the whole animation here. I don't know if it's like right at this point or whatever, but. It's some of the best work they do where it shows like how long his arms are and it just shows almost like from the point of view of the people swinging around him. It's awesome. Yeah, they're all flying around him doing circles and stuff and they're like, oh, this guy's slow. We've got him easy. It's just like the report said. <laughs> and 
They fly what? up on him, and <laughs> oh, right weird. when we see Bert's ugly face, report said super slow, yeah. super easy to deal with. <laughs> You've got it under control. And right when they get to Bert, they think they're about to go for his nape. He emits that steam that we saw him emit with Aaron up on top of the wall. Yep. And it just obviously it just pushes all of them back. Hanji's like, "Holy shit, that was hot." You know, someone's like, "Oh, is he trying to disappear again?" But no, he's just like. He's using too much steam. He yeah, just Ar- keeps on Armin, steaming. Armin, we have Armin going. Beep, 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 beep. He's like, oh, he's not trying to vanish this time. He's literally just using steam like a furnace just yep. to burn us away. Armin, of course, notices it first. You gotta love Armin. But, um, page turn. Page turn. We've got him evolved to where he just calls himself out on the page turn. Hanji says that they can't do anything but wait at this point. She's like, he's just going to keep using steam if we get close, but he's got to come out eventually. He's stuck to the wall. Like yeah. He can't go anywhere, right. so let's just wait for him. So thus begins the waiting game. Yep. And then she even says, let's just forget about capturing them. Kill them if Ooh. you have the chance. Uh, which, of course, makes oh. Armin look real worried when Hanji tells him that. Well, that, that gets that i have had the hots for hanji dude after well, she said that that's the glasses but i only bring this up because you get a great centered shot on armin's head and it just i realize it's been a few episodes since i've since i've pointed out how ridiculous armin's hair looks and that's it keep going that's all i have to say about it yep okay well all right anyways Connie then asks where reiner and bert are because they didn't have any odm gear on and he's worried about them well, I hope they're okay wherever they are. <laughs> I love how Connie has been so clueless this whole time. I'm he didn't even about know him. he didn't even know about the uh like when it flashed back to them twelve hours yeah. ago suspecting Reiner and, and Bert. He didn't know about it because he was with Reiner and Bert, so he has no idea what's going on. Poor Connie still thinks his family's out there trudging around somewhere. <laughs> He's like, I'll find him. Just give me some time. I'm going to find him. When he returns to his hometown, he will find him. But then get back to the Aaron fight where he is just getting his ass kicked by Reiner. Whew. I mean, he it shows him. He's like got half of his face gone, some of his arm where he hit him. Like he... He just straight up punched him and lost his hand because it's just straight armor. Yeah. Um, He's really good at punching things so well. Most of the time he doesn't even hit his target. This time he did. It was just the armor. But he's good at hitting things and then just his arms falling off. Yeah, and obviously Aaron's getting super emotional right now. And he's on the ground all beat up. And he's calling Reiner just a big piece of shit. And he's thinking back to training. He talks about always thinking how he was like, oh, Reiner, was. I always thought you were just such a good guy. I even wished to be as strong as you at one point. And this is kind of like, as emotional of a character as Aaron is, I feel like he finally has the right to right. be super emotional. Yeah, I mean, this is like what you always say. He's basically touching on the fact that he really did seem as like a big brother and like someone to look up to because Mikasa would be the only other person he could look look up to, and he's definitely not doing that, because he <laughs> refuses to do any of that. So he used Reiner as kind of that person to look up. And then he even talks about, he's like, were you just faking it the whole time in training? He's like, yeah, I always knew you were super strong. Like, what were you doing back yeah. then? So then Mikasa comes flying in with her sword and stuff. She tries to slice up his nape, but he's How'd got all that. Well... It didn't work. That's how that works. How'd that work? Is she? He literally has turtle shells all over his body. Just slices her blades right off the tip, and she just has no chance. And then shows like Aaron after Mikasa realizes she can't do this. She thinks back to when Aaron was punching Reiner just a few moments ago, and his punches didn't do anything either. So they pretty much have no way to fight this guy at this point, from what they're thinking. Aaron then finally snaps out of it and he starts thinking of how awful he truly is. Reiner, that is. And he says he has to erase him. He has to erase all of them. So he's gone from slaughtering, killing, to now erasing them. Yeah. He gets all hyped up. He finally starts to stand up. He looks terrible. He starts regenning. You're uh, like, oh, not only does he moment. stand up, he stands up as if he's a slinky. 
<laughs> he stands up as if he's the uh, the Undertaker coming from out of the coffin. <laughs> Gravity like... does not allow this move to be uh, to happen. He just somehow his like yeah. l- feet hook into the ground and he just like slowly raises up. You're like, oh, this is about to be epic. <laughs> this is gonna be so epic. And right when he goes in to hit Reiner, Reiner just fucking two pieces him to the moon. Oof. Sends him flying like who even knows how far, 150 feet. And that's when we go straight into the calling card. Martial arts. Titan martial arts. Whoa. Though not typically an impressive exhibition of power and size, martial arts is effective for titans just like it is for humans. Grappling is sometimes more potent than actual strikes. So that's a good little intake there. Uh, They might be telling us something that's going to happen here in a moment. Perhaps. (laughs) Um, So... A little peek behind the curtain here, as you know, we, uh, I said, I think two episodes ago, that we're trying to knock three of these out a week so we can be caught up for the season four premiere, December 7th, which has led us to doing something we've never done before. We're constantly evolving over here at the Podcast Chronicles, and at specifically gmail.com. this show, and attack our, the AOT Chronicles and Attack on Titan podcast. You summarized the first half of this episode. Now I'm relieving you, taking over second half of the episode. Cool, man. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. I'll see you later. If you please don't forget your mother. She's over there in the corner like she always is. And last time Why you, is she still here? Last time you forgot her, and that was a really weird week where you didn't come pick her up. And we kind of just fed her, and she just kept asking where you were. I, I really appreciate you taking care of her, by the way. Um... She just slept in the floor of our kitchen. It was super weird. We gave her the guest bedroom, and she just slept in the kitchen. Well, yeah, I mean, she, she usually does that. That's kind of normal. We've really got to talk about that. So, okay. Anyway, uh, real quick, I wanted to touch up on this. This was back in my notes for your part, but either you didn't say the right thing to trick in my memory or what. Krista seemed to be the only one to care about Ymir being gone because everyone else was just kind of like, hey, you know, she was kind of a bitch. Yeah. She was uh, kind of a bitch, and she also hid being a titan from us. <laughs> Just wanted to touch up on that point. Now we're getting into the second half here. Like you said, Aaron gets so hard, he goes back in time to when Annie was putting a beat down on him. That's how hard yeah, he got hit. Yeah, he got hit so bad that he all of a sudden was 11 years old again. <laughs> <laughs> she says that he was coming at her so hard that she just used his energy against him. She goes on to say that, you know, she's just a girl and aren't men supposed to be gentle with yeah. such fragile creatures? She has such a delicate body. Well, Chad certainly isn't. Um, what? What you're, was that? You're certainly not gentle. Right? With such fragile creatures? Just keep going. Moving on. (laughs) She goes on to suggest that Aaron learns his technique. And as he says, nah, let's take a break. She rushes him and immediately gets him into some sort of head slash arm lock. Listen, I'm not a big wrestling guy, so I don't know what this is called. I'm sure there's a name for it. I think it's a uh, head slash arm lock. Okay. I wish I had known that that's what it was called. I'm sure some wrestling guys are going to be in the uh, the old comments and letting us know and for that i appreciate you i really dig this part aaron surrenders practically before he even hits the ground and annie doesn't let go of him yet because she says learn something before you surrender is that a nominee for chad's quote of the week well keep thinking about it (sighs) yep It is. It's all right. Me. <laughs> okay, we were all on the edge of our seats. Thanks for finally coming in yeah. and saying that. Reiner comes soaring in out of nowhere to land on Aaron. Like, literally, to land on him and literally out of nowhere. <laughs> and, of course, we know who the only person that could get Reiner Daz. flying it like that. It was definitely Daz, right? It was Mikasa. Oh, dang. She walks over asking Annie to learn that move as well. So that makes me think that like she was fighting Reiner and the entire time she was really just watching Aaron and Annie because she was yeah. very insecure about what was going on over there. She's like dodging Reiner's like strikes and stuff while just watching. She doesn't even have her <laughs> she, eyes on she him. She just feels She's, his move. Yeah. Her eyes are just staring at Aaron and Annie. 
and she sees something that she doesn't know about, so she's like, all right, let me just finish Reiner real quick. Somehow sends his body weight that far, uh, literally onto Aaron, and uh, hate how much I'm saying the word literally right now. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Yeah, you're literally saying it a lot. Um, And Mikasa wants to learn the move. And he says she doesn't know if she should bother because the move is meant to work on humans. What a roast, bro. I love that. Uh, wait for the roast. Don't get ahead of yourself. But she's interested to see if it will work on a beast. Okay, that is my quote of the week. Wow. Didn't want to get... I, I knew you said that one earlier. That was a good one. But this one yeah. is Chaz's um, quote of the week. You could have just said no earlier. Well, I had to think about it. Okay? You could have said no. Stay tuned. Instead, you went. I was pulling my uh, inner anime out. Uh, the, uh, maybe it might be. <laughs> and everyone starts to gather super quickly as Aaron, who's still sitting on the ground, by the way, says, "Oh my God, it's happening." And then, hey, did you, this might have just been in the uh, the dub version, did you see Keith Sadie's in the very back corner of the screen yelling, girl fight? You didn't see that? I did not see that, but I also didn't watch the dub version. Well, I like to watch both just to see what those people who are watching dub saw. In the dub version, Keith Sadie's in the background, he goes, girl fight? That was the most awake he's ever been. And he starts throwing it? water balloons at him. What? It's really weird. Uh, so like I said, everyone is freaking out. Sasha says, it's the big showdown. Marco says, who'll win? Annie, right? To which Jean says, are you crazy? I'll bet my whole dinner on Mikasa as a vein's like popping out of his head. He's so mad. God, he's so in love. I've missed Jean. We haven't got yeah. a lot of Jean stuff lately. Where is Jean right now? That's actually Think a really good... It. I was... Um... Think? Think? Well, he's with... Uh... That was a good question, wasn't it? I stumped you there. Uh, no, but like... Because I don't have the, same, the answer either. Well, you can say the same thing for Erwin and Levi. Where the hell are they? Levi's hurt. We won't... That's why we haven't seen well, Levi's Levi's hurt, season. but even though Levi's hurt, like, he's just sitting everything out. Like, he's still yeah. got to be... Like, Erwin, I'm sure, is dealing with some political stuff. And I'm sure that's... I'm sure, like, Jean, Erwin, all of them are, like, in the same spot, but... I know because, I know for a fact Levi's like hurt enough where they didn't want to send him to look for the hole in the wall. And that's why he's not out. But I but the other ones, like you said, they haven't really said where Erwin is and, and Jean the same way. We could be way off and we just missed it, but I'm not exactly sure where Jean is. Well I miss him. Uh we snap back to Step back to reality, back to monality. Reiner then asks Aaron who he thinks will win, to which Aaron replies, Heh, I wonder. Well, that's, I mean... Aaron's just more... Just, he just, he's the just, typical, oh, wow, two girls are fighting over me? I wonder just, what's gonna happen. He's so annoying, dude. Like, aren't you gonna have the girl who's the, been by your side for the past however many years back, and you're gonna go with, Heh, I wonder... He's got a thing for Annie, dude. You can just see it in his eyes. We snap back to Aaron and his Titan, still getting smashed as he thinks, how did that go again? Hey, Aaron, you drunk? <laughs> you don't remember? It was such a big moment that you went, oh, wow, it's it's happening. And now you're going, well, how did that end again? <laughs> he asked himself if this is what they mean when they say life flashes before your eyes. He proceeds to stand up as if he is a baby giraffe, saying he's never felt this awful. He's never looked this awful, either. He looks pretty bad. Armin yells from the wall to not engage, because in a slug fight, he doesn't have a chance to win. Mikasa, he's like, no, I'm just going to keep throwing these punches and having my hand blown <laughs> off. I'm, the tide's going to turn any second now. <laughs> Mikasa lands nearby, still with broken blades, and says, Oh! Bingo! And says, Aaron. <laughs> there it is. All right. We bring, got there. Bring your card to thepodcastchronicles@gmail.com, where you're going to win a great prize. Just a really good prize. <laughs> so uh, Aaron, by the way, he starts screaming his titan scream. He dodges Reiner's punch. He dodges Reiner's punch. He dodges Reiner's punch and counters into the same takedown that Annie used on him, which is the classic arm slash headlock. Yes. 
The sweep. Armin, of course, realizes immediately that he's using Annie's move. Aaron thinks to himself, says, you know, he doesn't know why they're trying to do this, but that their plan has many flaws to it. One of those flaws being teaching him how to fight. Because, mm-hmm. you know, he had that one quick little five-minute session, and now he just knows what he's doing. Reiner gets out of the initial arm and headlock and kind of switches position, gets on top of Aaron, and then Aaron gets him in a headlock with his legs. So he's got multiple moves. He's not just a one-trick pony. And, and this is, like, typical MMA stuff. I mean, the fight that I watched a week ago where the guy, like, had his arms ripped off, basically, yeah. uh, this is the same moves. Yeah, he begins to squeeze so tightly that some of Reiner's armor starts to shatter. Reiner tries to get out of it as Aaron changes positions, slamming Reiner to the ground and grabbing his arms and bending it until it snaps off and then throws it and it lands just real close to Mikasa, who... What a strange coincidence. ...is probably so excited at this point. And I think Aaron saw Mikasa out of the corner of his eye and he threw the arm at her. (laughs) (laughs) Two birds. (laughs) Aaron backs off while he was has had an extreme advantage and just takes a second to look at Reiner. During this time, Armin yells for Aaron to start running for the wall, but Mikasa states that Reiner isn't going to allow for them to escape that easily, which, I mean, he's not going to do because he begins to stand up again and face directly at Aaron. We cut over to good old Hannes, who uses his ODM gear to launch above the wall and then is surprised to see the Colossal Titan. How the hell did he not know that that was there? (laughs) There is no way he could be within a five mile radius of this thing and not notice it sticking (laughs) out of the wall. With steam emitting from it. (laughs) But yet he he climbs this entire wall, gets up to it, and it's like now he's got a great vantage point. He goes, oh my god, there's a colossal type. Hey, but this guy doesn't drink, okay? (laughs) Yeah. He asks Krista where Aaron is and then looks over the wall as Hanji lands on Aaron's shoulder. She tells him that he won't be able to escape unless they slow down Reiner. But then she goes on to say, can you break another one of his limbs? Because we can't actually help you, like, at all. (laughs) Aaron nods, and oh my god, someone grab him a towel because Hanji loses control of herself because she was just understood by a titan. That is such a big moment for her. He just got rained on on his shoulder. She's been capturing titans and talking to them for, like years now and has never gotten anything so i love seeing how cute her face looks when she blushes too when Aaron nods she's just beside herself milf armin give it's the glasses armin get and she's not a mom armin gives mikasa the rest of his blades i'm sure she will put those to good use (laughs) Aaron looks at reiner and says that they are the ones backed into a corner while Aaron's back is pretty much literally against a wall (laughs) Don't think he understands how corners work. Reiner begins f- sprinting full speed at Aaron as he breaks out of some of his armor to do so. Like, he's literally oh, yeah. shattering it as he moves. Mikasa, she does some excellent analysis here. She kind of looks at him, tracks him, and she says, He's fast. <laughs> Good work. Aaron and he's fast. She's had some good intakes this episode. <laughs> Woman of many words. <laughs> challenging Armin. Reiner takes Aaron down as Aaron focuses on his leg, but Armin says for Aaron to stand back up because Reiner has the high ground, and he's just sending punches down his way. Like, this is no way to win a fight. No. Thankfully, Aaron manages to get back up on his feet, worried, but he's still worried about Reiner's tackle because he's just like, how am I supposed to dodge that? Uh, two random soldiers. Don't know the names of these guys. How about you? I'm sure. Um, yeah, Soldier 1 and Soldier number 2. Well, Soldier 1 and Soldier 2 are amazed by Reiner's speed while one of them asks, Hey, are we completely useless here? <laughs> now, these guys, these guys get it. <laughs> they get it. I, I respect that dialogue. Soldier 1, Soldier 2, moving up on my list. Hanji says no because she is doing her best impression of Armin and realizes that if his whole body was made of armor, he wouldn't be able to move like that. She pinpoints open spots without armor from past soldiers, like in history, and says go for the armpits, groin, and behind the knees. Aaron, accepting the fact that he can't evade Reiner's tackle, 
gets ready for it, you know, plants his feet in the ground. As he's taken, he straddles him and goes down to the ground, locking Reiner's head. Mikasa dives in. She slices up the back of Reiner's knees. Aaron's, you know, he uses more strength and breaks more of the armor off. Give me that neck! He continues to struggle, saying that he can win against Reiner. Who, by the way, stops fighting and just starts screaming as Armin notices that they are somehow directly below Bert. And hey, hold on. Before we go any further, I would put this as my quote of the week, but Chaz is not about this life. I'm not going to... I already committed to what my quote of the week was. And I will say, though, my favorite quote that is not a quote of the week is Aaron saying, give me that neck. I love it so Give me much. that neck, boy. Uh, it's just funny, you know, how they just so happen to be directly under Bert, you know? Well, yeah, because, like, Reiner was scooting towards him. Yeah. It was like he was inching that way. It takes a second for everyone to realize what's going on until you start to hear some cracking in the direction of the Colossal. Connie realizes what's going on, and so he begins to say, Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> Bert snaps out of his ribcage that was dug into the wall and swan dives mouth open towards Aaron and then that's the end of the and episode. Connie's yell, hey guys, watch out, is top five yells of the entire series. <laughs> and it just awesome. does a lot of help, you know? <laughs> hey guys, watch out. Okay, hey. thank you, Connie. <laughs> really appreciate the heads up. So, I mean, like you said, that... Last episode might have been a little bit deeper, but this one had some crazy action, and Mm -hmm. Aaron's really putting up a pretty good fight here. Yeah, he finally realized that he can't just throw his fist and have them continuously disintegrate (laughs) into his armor. He realized he's like the skinniest titan ever, and he's got to start using some other moves. Yep. Um... Yeah, if you got any feedback, you know, let us know at thepodcastchronicles at gmail.com. I say we just hit a real quick of our segment, learn a little something about Ronnie and Chaz. Uh, We've kind of got this nailed down now, but real quick for the new people. Yep. It's, uh... You learn a little bit about Ronnie and Chaz. Excellent. All right. I went first last time. Kick us off, Chaz. I'll just give a little short intake here, but, um, I use, whenever I take a shower, okay... I use a bar of soap and shampoo and conditioner are in separate bottles. I'm not a three-in-one guy. Right. I do not like you if you're a three-in-one guy. You can still listen to this podcast if you are. Well, see, I think the three-in-one, that's a great area to operate in when you're like middle school, early high okay. school. Yeah, it's great. Um, but uh, anytime you're over the age of 15, separate your yeah. shampoo and conditioner. Yeah. Yeah. Just so okay. you, mainly just because you have a reason to fill up the rack, right? Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? Have one bottle on yeah, your you rack? you look poor if you got one bottle. Get a couple bottles in there. And yeah. I also use a loofah. Okay, let's... Yeah, that uh, was the biggest... I wait, thought what? you were going to slide by that. I, slide by you what? use a loofah. Slide by um, what? The fact that you use a loofah. Well, I mean, it's, um, I said that quick, and it's, we can kind of just overlook yeah, that. Yeah, if you're a guy and uses a loofah, <laughs> I mean, okay. No, I mean, that's not... Um, if you don't think that's weird, I guess let us know. But more importantly, if you want to rip Chaz a little bit, definitely send him an email at thepodcastchronicles at gmail.com. Uh, a little something about Ronnie. I have asthma. All right. Thanks for tuning in. This was uh, another episode. We'll see you next time. All right. Shinzo wo Sasagio. Peace. Peace. That was a terrible way you said that. I know. Good. You're usually no, I, please just disregard Do that. Do you want a second try? Yes. Okay. Shit. Thank you.